Welcome, uh, my name is Andre Zaletka. I work for RIPE NCC and uh, yeah, in this talk, I would like to, I would like to present you a uh, environment that we use for our new training course on uh, IPv6 security. Next slide, please. First of all, uh, what is RIPE NCC Learning and Development, the departure I work for? It's a former training services. Uh, we used to provide and we still provide uh, trainings to our members of RIPE NCC. Uh, uh, it started with face-to-face -face trainings about 20 years ago, but uh, and uh, they are still like on, except for the pandemic situation, which make us suspend them temporarily. Uh, but we also do webinars. We did them even before it was cool with pandemic, uh, where webinars are always live delivered by uh, people speaking like me, uh, myself uh, or remotely, uh, and have some interactivity with our, with our uh, participants. And what we also launched in 2014 was RIPE NCC Academy, which is basically e-learning platform where people can uh, learn uh, some uh, some of our curriculum uh, on their own pace uh, on their own computer without any in direct interactivity with trainers and uh, for this uh, the newest addition to our portfolio is actually a program called certified professionals where if you get some knowledge you can actually prove that you have that knowledge by uh, getting certified which uh, means absolving an exam of about 50 questions in a controlled environment, we use some, something called remote proctoring, where you actually have to prove your ID in front of your web camera, and then you are observed by online proctor uh, over webcam. So you cannot cheat, and it has to be you who is making the test. And therefore, the badge that you can uh, you can earn, like the one on the slide, uh, is actually like uh, recognized that it, that that is really you who has the knowledge that we prove. Next slide, please. Yeah, and uh, the newest part that we have in, uh, in RIPE and NCC Academy is called IPv6 security. This is something that we have been doing for a while in a face-to-face -face training course. Then uh, during uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we actually uh, uh, adopted this face-to-face -face training course uh, into uh, three, uh, two hour long webinars, but also we worked uh, even before pandemic on uh, adapting it into the e-learning uh, environment. So now it's also um, e-learning course where you can learn about various aspects of uh, security uh, related questions with IPv6 and also uh, also how to how to attack. Uh, some vulnerabilities that are in the protocol or in its implementation or how to mitigate against it. Uh, and for this uh, e-learning, there is this new thing, which is, which is, the, which is the lab. Uh, we used to have a similar lab for face-to-face -face training. Actually, we still, we still do have it, but we don't, don't do face-to-face -face trainings, um, where you basically have three Linux machines and it's like, uh, you know, one machine uh, belongs to Alice, the other to Bob, and the third to Mallory, who is trying to uh, somehow intercept the communication between them. So basically, there's the, there's the idea behind this. Um, so there are three machines connected to the same network, so they can they can uh, try uh, various um, various local network attach, uh, attacks and also other things. And basically, there's like uh, th that thing. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, the, the idea was how to deliver this, uh, how to deliver this environment for the e-learning because for the face-to-face -face training, we actually are running these virtual machines in our own on-premise uh, hardware. But uh, for, uh, for e-learning, this is a little bit hard because the e-learning is free for everybody. Uh, so there can be like uh, spikes of, uh, of uh, many concurrent users and also user can take their own time and uh, not, finish the, not finish the lab in an hour or two, but maybe some longer time. So uh, we, we are trying to find some solution that would be, let's say very scalable and at the same time would not, would not cost too much money uh, and uh, should not uh, put any limitation on how long 
are you allowed to play with it? Because uh, I think it's pretty cool to uh, play even uh, a bit more than what is what is allowed in the uh, in the environment. So we decided that that we will use instead of cloud, we will use every other people computers, and we will just deliver virtual machine image that will that will uh, everybody be able to install on their own computer and then play completely locally on their own computer. Next slide, please. Uh, there are some challenges with that, of course, because uh, uh, we have some portion of Windows users, some portion of Linux users, some portion of uh, Mac OS users. And uh, even though each platform now supports virtualization pretty well, uh, there is no like a common standard except for VirtualBox. But the virtual box is a little bit like, let's say, the lowest lowest common base. Um, and uh, also, if you run a virtual machine, you know that, that there's always like issues with screen resolution and with keyboard layout and things like that. So the idea how to solve it here was to run the virtual machine headless, so no uh, no uh, deal with console and deliver everything over web interface uh, to the browser in the host. Uh, machine yeah. and to make the virtual machine deliver even easier we actually used a tool called vagrant next slide please so uh, in the end how does the product look like uh, basically uh, what you have to do and you we have a special tutorial for that which is like very straightforward you have to install virtualbox and install vagrant on your computer and once you do it you just open terminal and type two commands and after a few minutes uh, you will get running environment in a virtual machine that is that is uh, accessible on your local host address, and there you will see three consoles of three uh, three Linux containers actually uh, with pre-installed uh, tools from the Hackers Choice IPv6 toolkit and similar also Term Shark uh, and uh, other tools that are used then during this e-learning for. Uh, for practicing uh, and trying out the attacks and um, uh, how they exactly work, how they behave, what is going to change in routing tables, and you can see it on your own. Next slide, please. Uh, so how does this thing exactly work? It's completely based on open source software. Uh, therefore, it's also fully redistributable. Uh, the base thing is a virtual machine uh, of Ubuntu. Uh, in this virtual machine, which is used as a service machine, we actually run the three, three virtual server that the user is playing with. And those three servers are actually just containers that are running under LXD. So uh, that's pretty straightforward way how to run uh, containers with uh, very small, uh, very small overhead and very small uh, re requirements for, for the uh, resources of the host computer. Um, we make the consoles accessible over the web interface using a uh, tool called TTID and Tmax. And there's also some website around it uh, to make this environment a little bit more user-friendly, which is served by Nginx. Uh, and uh, and uh, everything is de uh, de deployed using Ansible and everything is de developed publicly. So there's a repository on GitHub of RipenCC where you can actually see the whole code that is uh, building this lab environment from scratch. And you can also, also of course, submit issues and uh, uh, even or even pull requests if you find some way to improve this environment. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so that's basically where we are now. I would like to invite you to give it a try, to give it a try to our new IPv6 security e-learning course and also the labs. Uh, but of course, uh, so far we are collecting feedback from users uh, to see uh, whether they are satisfied or what are the issues with running labs like this, because it's still like more, more or less experiment to see whether this is actually a viable way to go forward. So far, um, in, my, uh, in my opinion is that yes, it seems that it, it is a way forward. But of course, the next and the next labs and next e-learnings will probably need also some let's say more real networking gear than just Linux servers. So I'm now investigating a way how to, how to plug in some routers, like uh, now down there are some routers available as containers. So this should be like pretty straightforward. 
Uh, but of course, the other thing is if we want to have it uh, distributable like this, then the license agreements can be against us because if something is just free for use, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's also free to redistribute. Next slide, please. Yeah, and that's everything from me and I'm ready to take some questions if there are. Thank you, Andre. If there are any questions from the room, please come to the front and line up and uh, state your affiliation and name. Otherwise, if you're on the webcast, uh, if you're watching the webcast, please type in the questions channel and Ben will uh, relay your question to the floor. Do we have any questions for Andre from in the room? We'll just leave it a little longer for the lag of the webcast. Doesn't seem like there are any questions. So I think I will thank, say thank you very much, Andre. I found the talk very interesting. And uh, thank you for presenting about the, uh, the security lab. Thank you very much. And have a nice rest of the UK now. Thank you.